Johnny Dollar. Uh, hi, Johnny. This is Charlie. Charlie Warren? Right. Worldwide Mutual out in L.A.? None other. Charlie, you're a bum. I don't even know you. Huh? <laughs> now, what brought that on? That last case you handed me out there back in December. Now, take it easy, pal. Why not come out here to nice, warm, sunny Southern California, Johnny, and get away from all that freezing New England weather, you said? Well, sure I did. So where did I end up hunting for that killer? 7,000 feet up in the mountains where I nearly froze my ears off. I am only just beginning to thaw out, so I say it again, Charlie, you are a bum. Okay, okay then, Johnny. Come on back here and I'll make it up to you. How? Another assignment. <laughs> this time right out in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Yeah? Matter of fact, it's over near an old stamping ground of yours. Lake Mojave? Lake Mojave. Say no more. I'll pack a razor, a clean shirt, all the fishing tackle I can find and be on my way. And a thirty-eight pistol, maybe? You just telephone Ham Pratt over at Lake Mojave Resort to have a room for me and... What was that last crack you slipped in there? Bring along a what? Uh, just just uh, kidding is all, Johnny. Oh, yeah? What kind of an assignment, Charlie? Uh, meet you here at L.A. International. Give you the whole story. Yeah, I think you'd better. The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Worldwide Mutual Insurance Company, Los Angeles office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the mixed blessing matter. Expense account item one. $199.27 for a cab to Bradley Field, a plane to New York, then a jet to Los Angeles. Thanks to good connections, it was only about 6 p.m. Pacific time when I arrived at L.A. International Airport. True to his word, Charlie Warren was there and waiting. After helping me load my luggage, including the fishing tackle, into a rented rental car, he led me up to the flight deck restaurant and we ordered cocktails. Your health, Johnny. May we never grow old. Oh, I'll drink to that. Ah, I can use this. Hmm. I'm That's the little good. man who's had a busy, busy day. So let's eat, drink, and be merry, Johnny. Oh, tomorrow we may die? What? Or is this big dinner bit just so that you can say the condemned man ate a hearty meal? <laughs> what under the sun are you... Oh, you mean that crack I made about being sure to bring a longer yes, gun? Yes. Honest engine, Johnny. I was only kidding about oh, that. Oh, you were. Hmm? Honest engine. Oh, you said that. But it got you curious enough to come out here, didn't it? Well, thought of a chance to break up a long, hard winter with a little warm water fishing is what got me out here. Nothing else but... So, if you want to make up for the freezing I took on your company's behalf last time and keep me happy... Johnny, I told you I'd make up for that, and I will. Yeah, all right. I telephoned your friend Ham Pratt and told him you'd arrive there sometime late tonight. Mm -hmm. He promised to have not only a comfortable motel unit for you, but a boat and 75-horse outboard, complete with electric starter, electromatic drive, a tank full of gas, and a bucket of live bait. Sounds great. The works for as soon as you can get yourself out on the lake. And that, Charlie, my boy, will be at the crack of dawn tomorrow morning. Uh, Johnny. Yes, Charlie. Well, isn't the fishing over there supposed to be uh, a lot better in the late afternoon? And what is that supposed to mean? Uh, how's about another drink before we order the food, huh? Charlie. Uh, another of the same, Johnny, okay? All right, Charlie, let's have it. Have <laughs> what? I don't know what you mean. The reason I am not supposed to go fishing tomorrow in spite of all your sweet talk. Did I say that? Well, didn't you? Well, I meant uh, not tomorrow morning is all. Why not? Well... There's just one little thing maybe you ought to sort of take care of first. One little thing? Yeah. Like arson or murder, burglary, embezzlement? One little thing like that? No, sir. Well, what then? Well, just pick up some money over at our branch in, uh, in Kingman. You know our man over there, Jake Kessler? I know him very well. But don't tell me you're going to pay me off in advance. Well, no, not exactly. But, uh, well, let Jake tell you what it's all about, what the money's for. Well, don't you know? Let him handle it. He's the one that seems to be worried. How much? Oh, about 40000 What? In cash. You know, to pay off a retirement policy. Charlie, what's the hitch? Johnny, all I know is the payment's due. 
It's been okayed by the company, and for some reason, Jake doesn't want to or can't make it himself. Why not? Well, you know Jake, the old worry wart. Well, sometimes his worries pay off, Charlie. Well, anyhow, after a good night's sleep at Mojave, go on over to Kingman, Arizona, pick up the dough, and deliver it. Then you can spend the rest of the week fishing on expense account. Okay, pal? Sure, sure. Okay. Why not? There's only one trouble with it. Trouble? What do you mean? You know as well as I do, Charlie. It all sounds just a little too easy. Planning to send your children to college? How would you feel if you found that your son or daughter couldn't get in because there was no room? You'd feel doubly bad if you learned only then that there was something you could have been doing about it all along. In less than 10 years, the number of college applications will have doubled. Now, support the college of your choice. And for more information about this problem and what you can do to help, write Higher Education, Box 36, Times Square Station, New York 36. Higher Education, Box 36, Times Square Station, New York 36. Jake Hessler, over there in Kingman, Arizona, is quite a character. He's about 55. Tall, angular, long-legged, well-tanned by the desert sun. His office there on the main street is on the second floor above the Conroy Mercantile. Johnny! Johnny Dollar! Jake, you old son of a... <laughs> hey, what happened to you? I made a gall-dang fool of myself, Johnny. Sit down. Well, tell me what happened. After all the ribbon I've took from these natives over the years about the, the clothes I wear. I know. Well, yesterday morning, I finally took a dare and tried getting up on top of a horse. Uh oh. And what happened? <laughs> God darn critter ended up on top of me. Oh, Jake. Busted one ankle, threw a knee out of joint. So I got to be carried up and down those stairs by a couple of the boys at the mercantile and... All in all, I'm a gall dang mess. Can't even drive my own car. Oh, well, Jake, all I can say is I'm sorry. And that's why I have to send for somebody who could represent the company officially to pay off old man Blessing when he suddenly up and demands the whole thing in one hunk of cash. Did you say Blessing? Yeah. His name's Barney Blessing. Mm-hmm. 41,000 cash. And I'm sure glad you're the one that sent to do it for me like I asked him to. You, uh, you suppose uh, the company got suspicious too, Johnny? Suspicious of what, Jake? Well, about why, in spite of setting up that policy for him to get paid off something every month after 65 and for as long as he lives, now he wants it all at once. Well, do you think there might be something fishy about it? That name of his uh, doesn't ring a bell? No, I don't think so. You're old enough to remember Prohibition, all the bootlegging and racketeering in those days? Why, sure. Well, Barney Blessing was a gunman back then, but he never got caught. Oh? Then about a year ago, he moved out here to a worked-out hunk of land on the other side of Hackberry. Mm -hmm. Him and a fellow named a Harry Higby, and a beat-up old dog named a Vicky. Oh, who is this Higby? Just a friend of Barney Blessing's? A friend. Not on your life. Hated him. You see, that Higby back in those days, well, they called him the twin. Yeah? He was the reason Barney never got caught. I don't follow you. He was just a, a hanger-on. He wasn't a killer. He, he wasn't of much use to that mob except for one thing. Higby looked so much like Barney Blessing that when Barney was sent out to do a job, then they'd plant Higby someplace where... A lot of people that see him would swear that he was Barney. So that he was kind of Barney's alibi. Right. Mm. He was how come they could never pin a thing on Barney. I see. Well, why did he bring Higby along out here? Well, don't you see, Johnny? Blackmail. Ah. Yeah, maybe you have something there, Jake. Sure, that Higby knows enough to send him up for life. All he has to do is open his mouth and start singing. So Barney's not only had to keep him around and feed him, but even made him beneficiary of this policy, too. If Barney dies before the policy matures. Right. Tell me, uh, when will Barney be eligible to start collecting on it? 
Well, that's just a trouble. He's 65 right now. And, Johnny, the old coot must have read all the fine print. Why you say that? All of a sudden, now that I'm all uh, busted up and can't get around anywhere, all of a sudden he telephones me from, uh, uh, well, wherever it is he gets to a telephone, with this demand we pay him off in cash. Deliver it to him in hand. Mm. That's uh, the way that fine print reads, in hand. But you don't want to pay him off. No. Why not? What's all this all-fired big hurry about all of a sudden? Why this sudden change to wanting the whole thing in one lump sum without letting us know beforehand? Have you seen him and talked to him at all since he moved out here? No, i never seen him. Like a darn fool, I just never got around to it. Never even met him. Mm-hmm. Well, who around here does know him, Jake? Not anybody. He or Higby or whichever it was used to come here to Kingman for groceries at first, but for nigh on, uh, on to a year now, there's been no sign of him. Jake? Yeah? If you've been able to have yourself uh, holed up to this office every day, you could have got out there to Barney Blessing's ranch. Well, uh, so what? Well, so instead you sent for me. Why? Johnny. Johnny, do I have to lay it out to you? Go ahead. Well, you just ought to know by now that I have me a nose for trouble. And when I think of what Barney was once and how he said over the phone that if I showed up at his place to, to give any argument, showed up uh, without the money, well... well Jake, um... you old rascal, I think you pulled your accident on purpose that you're scared. <laughs> Probably for no reason at all. You just want me to stick my neck out for you. I tell you, I got an instinct. Mm. Always have had, and it's always been right. But now, Johnny, if, um, you know, if you just want to duck out of this one... And, duck out? Uh, yeah, stay away from those two ex-mobsters and go over to the lake and do some quiet fishing instead. Okay, well, okay, Jake, just tell me how to get there. By golly, Johnny. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't let me down. Mm. So, now, here. Yeah. Uh, here now. You'll have to take this along with you. That's the $41,000. Yeah, in cash money. Mm. Had the bank deliver it to me just before you got here. I thought that kind of payoff had to come from the main office of a company like yours. I wish it did. But you know worldwide, immediate payment on any claim at any place in the world. That's the slogan. Yep. That's why even a little local office like this one has to come up with it. That's why I can't give Barney Blessing any argument. Well... If I do find any grounds for your wild suspicions, whatever they are, maybe I will. Now, uh, you listen, Johnny. Yes, Jake. Well, here, uh, here's the receipt and so on uh, that uh, he'll have to sign. Um, okay. Now, wait a minute now. Is that a copy of the policy itself there? That's right. Well, how about if I borrow it for a little while, Jake? Just long enough to have somebody make a copy of it, hmm? Then you are thinking the way I am, aren't you? Am I? So here. Just in case, I, uh, well, I had this extra photostat made for you. Good. All right, Jake. Give me some directions and I'll be on my way. Sure. But now, Johnny. Well? Well, like you say, maybe I'm all worried up about nothing at all. Sure you are. But, uh, be careful anyway. Will you, Johnny? Sure. Jake had told me the ranch was near the old mining town of Hackbury. Population about 100. But from Hackbury, I had to take a narrow, crooked, dusty little road some 20 miles further to the foot of the Cottonwood Mountains. Believe me, this was really desolate desert country. But the tiny ranch was like a sort of oasis out there. Five or six acres, I'd say, all of it surrounded by a barbed wire fence, except for the driveway up to the house. Thanks to half a dozen windmills busily pumping water, old Barney had managed to make himself a tidy little farm with vegetable gardens enough to supply all his needs and then some. And over in one corner, fenced off by themselves, were a dozen or so beef cattle making the most of a surprisingly green, lush growth of alfalfa. The house sitting there in the middle of the property was a small but well-kept building of concrete block. 
As I pulled up and stopped, the front door opened just a crack. And then slowly, a man emerged. An old man, weather-beaten, but husky and healthy-looking. As I started toward him, he slowly raised and aimed a high-powered rifle at me. Don't you see that sign out front there? It says no trespassing. I saw the sign. Well, that's what you're doing, Buster. This is my property. Now get out. Your property, hmm? Yeah, that's right. Then you're Barney Blessing? Yeah, that's right. So what? Now you get out. Sure. If you don't care about getting your insurance money. Huh. Well, then I'll uh, wait a minute. Oh, well, that's better. You saying you're that Jake Hessler I talked to on the phone? No. I don't sound like him. Who are you? My name is Dollar. Here now. Oh, watch it, Buster. What? What you reaching for? My credentials. You want to lower that gun and have a look at them? Did you say Dollar? That's right. Johnny Dollar? Right again. You're some kind of detective, ain't you? What you doing here? Well, if you'll put down that gun, I'll tell you. When I'm ready. Okay. Jake Hessler is laid up. He couldn't make it. So I've brought your insurance money. Yeah, my 41 grand? Where is it? Right here, Mr. Blessing. $41,000. Okay, okay. Give it over to me. And then get out of here. Before you sign the papers for it, the receipt and so on? Are you kidding? Okay. Come on inside here. I don't trust you until I get the dough. Now, let me see them papers. Put them here on this table. All right. Here you are. If you're Barney Blessing, just go ahead and sign them. Sure. Why not? Barney, don't you want to see my identification or something? Make sure who I am? Well, that depends. After you've signed. Here now. Uh, uh, watch it. As I was about to say, here, you can use my pen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're pretty jittery, aren't you, Mr. Blessing? I, I don't like strangers around here, see? No, I can see that. Well, are you going to sign? Sure, sure, sure. Only I'd say, if I get my money, don't you come any closer. All right, all right. Okay. Now, bar... Me blessing. You always have that much trouble signing your own name? What are you talking about? Yeah, okay now? Uh, before you sign those others... I said watch it. I don't like the way you keep reaching inside your coat that way. I don't like the way you keep waving that rifle around. Now look. Yeah. What's the matter? Just compare your signature with the one here on the policy. Yeah. Well, what do you expect after all these years? After all these years you've had to practice? What are you talking about? Will you put the gun down for a minute? No, sir. All right, then tell me this. Where's your partner, the man who came out here to live with you? You mean Higby? Harry Higby? That dirty, rotten, blackmail. What do you want to know for, huh? What's he got to do with this? They called you the twins, didn't they? So what? Uh... So much alike that nobody could tell you apart? Certainly nobody out in this country ever knew which was which. Now, now you wait a minute. You saying I ain't Barney Blessing? I said, where is he, this partner of yours? Well? Okay, so I'll tell you. Dirty, chiseling stoolie. I finally got fed up with him. I, I throwed him out. You did, hmm? Yeah, it cost me a lot, though, but I paid him off and made him get out of here. Okay? All right, now, let me sign the rest of these here papers so you can give me the dough and you can get out. One more thing. Then now what? What about the dog? Huh? Oh, you mean Vicky? Well, whatever her name was. Now what's that stinking, lousy, flea-bitten hound dog got to do with it? You say that about her after the way you brought her all the way out here from Chicago, was it? Okay, okay, okay. So I'm all upset on account of Vicky died a couple of days ago. I at the barrier. Oh, you did, hmm? Well, you don't believe it. Look outside the window there at the back. See that mound over the place where I laid the poor little pooch away? Mr. That mound of freshly turned earth is one of the first things I noticed when I drove in here. You know something? I'd like to see what's really under it. You know something, Dollar? I don't like you. I think you're trying to pull something on me. I mean, I won't stand for that. You see this? You think I don't know how to use it? I'm sure you do. Okay. I'll sign all your papers just to make it legal. 
But in the meantime, you reach inside your pocket and lay down that 41 G's where I can see it. You hear me? Now go ahead. I guess I haven't much choice, have I? You got no choice. Go ahead. Well, how about this instead? Oh, no, you... Shot the gun out of my hand, will you? All right, now, don't make a move. Now, now, now listen, listen. You me. listen, and don't forget that I'm holding a gun now. Okay. Okay, you win. Well, maybe I got excited. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, let me sit down. I'll sign the rest of the papers. You, you can give me the money and get. I'm afraid not. Not yet. Huh? Not until you've done a little digging for me. Outside, where that mound of earth is. What's the matter? Don't you believe me? I, I tell you, all you're going to find is the body of that poor little Ricky, the dog. We'll see. Now get going. Okay. Okay, you satisfied now? See, Dollar? It's only what's left of poor old Vicky. Yeah. Yeah, I see. In spite of the size of the grave. Well, well, well Vicky was a big old dog. Well, are you satisfied now? And, no. And go back. What? Looks pretty convincing. Would fool almost anybody. But I think you better dig a little more. What are you... No, no, sir. No, I won't. Oh, I said dig. Now, you go ahead and dig. No, no, I won't do it. I, I showed you Vicky's body. Ain't that enough? It's whatever may be underneath it that I want to see. Now, dig. Now, listen. You, you listen to me. He didn't die soon enough to leave it to you, did he? What? And then you somehow found out he was going to take it all in cash, enough to let him get away from you, out of a country where your blackmailing couldn't touch him anymore. You don't know what you're talking about. You couldn't about. take that, so you killed him. Then you thought that you'd collect instead, that nobody would know the difference, that nobody could prove that you aren't Barney Black. Listen. Now listen, Dollar, please. Didn't listen. you know his fingerprints are on file, that when you dig down there to him, all we have to do... Okay, okay. Okay, it's, it's Barney under there. I give up, huh? I give up. But don't you see, Dollar? I... Dig, Mr. Higby. Dig. <laughs> You knew it, Jake, didn't you? <laughs> well, just a hunch, Johnny. And even if it was a right one, I didn't know how I could prove it. But that feeling I had, a couple of punks like them, and nobody around here could prove which one was really which, and with all that money at stake, well, Johnny, I... <laughs> I just... I just kind of had me a hunch, is all. And Jake... It looks like that instinct, that nose for trouble of yours, is something that you had better hang on to. Now, darn it, because of the call from back in Hartford, I again had to miss out on the fishing. But I'm going to keep trying. You can depend on that. Expense account total, including mileage in the rental car and the trip home, four ninety-seven forty. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a case that could be marked top secret that blows wide open in more ways than one. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr., music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Louis Van Ruten as Harry Higby, Cliff Carpenter as Jake Hessler, Maurice Tarplin as Charlie Warren. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Art Hannah speaking. <laughs>